Good morning, students. This is chapter six, the molecular basis of inheritance. In this chapter, this is video number one of chapter six. In this chapter, we will be talking about the structure of the DNA and its packaging. Now, to start with, students, what is DNA? We all know that DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, the length of the DNA depends upon the number of nucleotide or base pairs. Now, let us see the structure of DNA. I just now told you that DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleic acid. So let us see to this structure of nucleic acid. Nucleic acid, uh, we know that they are biomolecules and they play a very important role in the process of inheritance. You also know that there are two types of nucleic acid, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA, that is ribonucleic acid. Talking about DNA, DNA has a double-stranded structure and its monomer is deoxyribonucleic nucleotide. The length of the DNA is determined by the number of nucleotides present in it. The number of nucleotides present in it is also known as base pair. So we can say that the length of the DNA is determined by the number of base pairs present in it. On the other hand, RNA is single-stranded. You can see DNA double-stranded, but RNA is a single-stranded structure. It's also a polynucleotide, but, uh, but the monomer is ribonucleotide. Now, let us see to the structure of a nucleotide. A nucleotide is basically made up of three things, pentose sugar, nitrogenous base, and phosphate group. Pentose sugar is of two types, ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar. Whereas nitrogenous bases are also of two types, purines and pyrimidines. Purine further is of two types, adenine and guanine. And pyrimidin is of three types, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Then the third is the phosphate group. Now let us take each and every part of the nucleotide separately. Talking about pentose sugar, the very first part, pentose sugar. The name itself, children, is suggesting pentose. Pentose means it is made up of five carbon atoms. Sugar, monosaccharide. So this monosaccharide is made up of five carbon atoms. In RNA, it is a ribose sugar. In D DNA, it's a deoxyribose sugar. What is the difference between the two? If you see to the structure, both are pentose sugar. The difference between ribose and deoxyribose, deoxy means one oxygen less at the second carbon. If you can see the cursor over here, the second carbon has HH, whereas in ribose, second carbon is having H and OH. So you can very well see that one OH, one O is less in deoxy ribose sugar, one oxygen less. Now, let's talk about nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous bases, as I told you just now, it is of two types, purines and pyrimidines. Talking about purines, purines also I told you, it's of two types, adenine and guanine. The purines are a heterocyclic aromatic organic compound, they are a nine-membered ring, whereas the pyramid, that is the cytosine, uracil, and thymine, that's also a heterocyclic aromatic organic compound. 
but it's a six membered ring. Now, let's come up to phosphate group. The phosphate group over here is an inorganic salt of phosphorus. If you can see over here, it's we do denote it by PO4, but it's actually H3PO4. Here, you can see when it is this, this phosphate group, one of the side, it is attached to the third carbon of one nucleotide. And on the other hand, it is attached to the fifth carbon of the other nucleotide. And while it form, forms a bond, a water molecule is removed. So you can look over here. See, in this figure, I've shown that one water molecule is being removed. OH and H from the third carbon. Same way over here. So, you can look over here, this phosphate group, PO4, is actually on one side attached to the third carbon of one nucleotide and to the fifth carbon, you can follow my cursor of the, the fifth carbon of the other nucleotide. Now, Let's talk about how they are attached. How nitrogenous bases and phosphate group is attached to the pentose sugar. See children, nitrogenous bases linked to the uh, pentose sugar by a bond known as n glycosidic bond. And when nitrogen is attached to the pentose sugar, then it is known as nucleoside. In a nucleoside, phosphate group is not attached. Okay, let me show you. Uh, yeah. Can you see this? This is the carbon number one. One is written over here, right? And here, nitrogen is base. Thymine is attached to carbon one. Always, nitrogen is basis is attached to carbon one. And this bond, where the cursor is, this bond is known as N glycosidic bond. That is, when this pento sugar is attached to the nitrogenous base, this bond is known as N glycosidic bond. And if this phosphate groups are not attached, then this is known as nucleoside. Once the phosphate group is attached, then you call it as nucleotide. In absence of phosphate group, it is nucleoside. Now, you can see over here, uh, this phosphate, as I told you just now, that one of the oxygen of phosphate is attached to the third carbon of the one nucleotide. And because water molecule is being removed, so it's an ester bond formation, Another oxygen of the same phosphorus is attached to the fifth carbon of the other nucleotide. So again, it's forming one ester bond over here. So this bond is known as what? Phosphodiester bond. As well as you can see, both the two strands are anti-parallel to each other. That is, what is anti-parallel? to uh, anti-parallel to each other means over here the fifth carbon end is free and the third carbon end of one strand is free so this is known as five prime to three prime and if you see the other one other strand of the same dna the third carbon is free on the top and below fifth carbon is free so this strand is three prime to five prime so they both are anti-parallel to each other. Now, let's come up to packaging of DNA habits. Now, students, children, you know that 
the uh, how can we take out the length of the DNA? Length of the DNA can be taken out by knowing the number of base pairs. By knowing the number of base pairs and the distance between the two base pairs. The distance between the two base pairs is 0 0.34 nanometer. And the uh, total number of base pair in a typical mammalian cell is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power 9 base pair. To take out the length, if we convert this nanometer into meter, it will become 0 0.34 into 10 raised to power minus 9 meter into 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power uh, 9 base pair. That gives you what? Approximately 2.2 meter. And what is the size of a nucleus? The size of a nucleus is only 10 raised to power minus 6 meter. Now, can you imagine? A nucleus size is 10 raised to power minus 6 meter. Minus 6. And in this small nucleus, which we cannot even see properly with a compound microscope, we, are, we require an electron microscope to see it. This DNA has to be present inside it, whose length is 2.2 meters. So you can imagine what amount of packaging or coiling does it require? Now let's see to the packaging of a prokarya. You know, in the prokaryotes, the, there is no nucleus as such, but that doesn't mean that the um, DNA is scattered. No, the DNA is not scattered throughout the cell. It is highly organized. We all know that DNA is negatively charged. And where is it organized in a prokaryotic cell? It's organized in a region known as nucleoid. We all know DNA is uh, negatively charged. So this negatively charged DNA is held with some positively charged protein. These are some positively charged protein. So it's held with some positively charged protein and it forms a loop, loop-like structure. So this is what, this is known as, this is the type of packaging in prokaryotes. But if we talk about the packaging in eukaryostrogen, it is a bit complicated. Because there is a nucleus and within the nucleus, the, uh, the DNA has to be packaged. And as I told you just now, the size of the nucleus is only 10 raised to power minus 6 meters. And the size of the DNA is 2.2 meter, which has to be packaged inside this. So it is highly complicated. Now for that, in eukaryotic nucleus, there are some proteins uh, known as histone proteins and non-histone proteins. So histone protein, they are made up of eight molecules. And so they are known as histone octamer. You can see the eight molecules over here, uh, H2B, H2A, H2B, H3, H3, H4, H4. So two H4, two H3 and two H2, but that is slightly different. We name it as histone 2 B e, histone 2 A. So it forms a uh, histone octum. And now you can see over here, the DNA, as I just now told you, is negatively charged. The negatively charged DNA wraps around the histone protein. Now, this histone protein is positively charged. The positive charge on the histone protein depends upon the amino acid residue of the side chains. These histone proteins are rich in two basic amino acids, lysine and arginine, which carries positive charge on their side chains. And this DNA, which is negatively charged, wraps around this positively charged histone protein. And this 
is now known as what nucleosome and the two dna is connected to each other by one h1 histone which is known as a linker and a typical nucleosome this typical nucleosome contains about 200 base pairs of a dna helix one rack contains about 200 base pairs of dna helix these nucleosomes they constitute the repeating unit of the structure of nucleus called chromatin yeah you can see the uh, dna the dna this is the histone protein on which the nucleosome is form is wrapping around and it's forming a nucleosome yeah you can see these nucleosomes they form uh, these are again further being coiled in a chromatin further condensation of chromatin and thus finally it forms a chromosome so chromatins are thread like stained bodies seen in the nucleus you can see over here uh, one. these are the stained body these nucleosome in the chromatin appears as beads in the string when you see it under a microscope and these beads on the string structure in the chromatin is packaged further packaged to form chromatin fibers you can see over here and that are further coiled and condensed at the metaphase stage of the cell division to form a chromosome so this is only this part of the chromosome which they are showing into chromatin if you and only a small portion of this chromatin if you open it up it opens like a beads and if you open a very small portion of this nucleosome it comes out to be this this one nucleosome and one nucleosome if you open it comes out to be like the dna double stranded now the higher level in this level this is a very high the high uh, higher most level of packaging uh, requires some more proteins like non histone proteins and then within the dna you get two portions basically euchromatin two forms of chromatin you get euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatins are less condensed structure and they are lightly stained and they are transcriptionally active whereas heterochromatin are highly condensed structure with a tighter dna packaging dark stain and they are trans transcriptionally inactive so in this video children we have talked about the structure of dna the um, we have talked about the um, uh, packaging i hope so it is clear to you all